Good morning and welcome to the show, ladies and ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Muslim women working in state schools may face a unique set of challenges that stem from the intersection of their religious identity and professional endeavors. One prominent obstacle is the potential for discrimination and bias. As stereotypes and misconceptions about Islam can lead to prejudice in the workplace. Now, this may manifest in subtle forms such as microaggressions or more overt instances of exclusion and unequal treatment. Additionally, navigating the balance between religious observance and work responsibilities can be challenging, especially during periods of, say, fasting or prayer times. Add on top of that, the wearing of the religious attire, such as the hijab, may also be a point of contention, as it can be a target for misunderstanding or, in some cases or some instances, discrimination. Women with a strong Muslim identity in school also express concerns about the age appropriateness of certain content in schools and believe that such discussions should be left to parents or guardians. Now, the tension between these viewpoints has led to protests, policy debates, debates and in some cases, legal challenges. So we brought in experts in this field, teacher, translator, poet and writer Malihe Elias to discuss this topic all the way from Toronto, live actually from Toronto. Mali, assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. How are you, Ali? I'm doing absolutely fine. Thank you very, very much for joining the show live from Toronto. What is it now? 5 five thirty-five. your time now? It is 5.35 p.m. in the morning right now. <laughs> and is this the usual time that you wake up uh, for for your your work, uh, your, your your daily life? Mm, around this time, yes. <laughs> around this time, fantastic. Well, look, I want to get straight into the topic. We, we It is a controversial topic. And, of mm -hmm. course, we do have to cover it with certain sensitivities. But let's give it a broad introduction in terms of yourself and your professional life. Now, you work at a, ca um, a Canadian public school board. Um, when it yes. comes to Shia identity, have you seen any representation of the Shia identity there? No, I have not. I have not because and i find that it's uh there are a number of reasons because of this because uh, i think that uh reason number one is that there is this fear that uh, and this is this is me uh hearing from my uh from some of my colleagues and from some of my students you know who are shias but who don't want people to know that they are shias because uh we are afraid that something bad is going to be said or we're, we're afraid that something bad is going to happen to us because of the uh, the Shia hate that exists so much, even unfortunately, in Canada. And the second reason that I find is that there's always this um, notion that, uh, you know, we have to show to the world that we are unified, which I agree. But I think that, I, I think that in the name of unity, the Shia identity should not be suppressed, mm. if that makes sense. No, absolutely. I think you're right in saying that because as soon as you step into any workplace, there are mm -hmm. a number of different challenges coming from a Shia perspective because you're already a minority of Muslims and Muslims mm -hmm. are already a minority of the larger population. So mm -hmm. when going into any workplace, especially when it comes to schools, and we were talking, I was talking to a brother who is actually the head of kind of the religious studies here in the UK. And he was saying that mm -hmm. there's many misconceptions about the Shia. When, when you first started off in schools, were there any misconceptions about Shia that alarmed you? Misconceptions about Shia? Uh, no, I haven't seen any misconceptions about, about Shias, but definitely a lot of curiosity you know even from some of my muslim students going uh madame because i, I teach french so they call me madame they go uh madame uh what is uh shia oh i did i did not know that that there are sunni muslims and shia muslims because i thought that a muslim is a muslim you know so i definitely saw more uh curiosity but at the same time you know I'll give you this as an example. So October here in Canada is uh, Islamic Heritage Month. And uh, at one of my schools, I decided to represent uh, Shia Islam. And I was told by one of my uh, colleagues that, uh, oh, uh, 
but you know we don't want to give the message that there is uh, that there are sects we want to give a message that there is one united islam and i said well shiism doesn't really have a representation and i'm a proud shia muslim like i even wear my little aram uh, sorry not aram sorry it's 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 way too early in the morning i even wear my little alam as a uh, like you know on my land on my lanyard whenever i go to work so i said that she well shiism doesn't really have any representation so this is my chance to represent shiism and that's what's going to happen because if we're going to talk about islamic heritage month is shia not islamic you know so then uh, i brought in my alam and it was placed um, you know right near the entrance of the school so that everyone can see it and i got a lot of uh, questions from my non-muslim co-workers and non-muslim students you know going like madam you know uh what is this what does it mean does it always have to be green and whatever have you so uh, yeah again public Ali, i can't hear you for some reason hello sorry yeah, can I you can still hear you fine now. Okay, yeah. I was, I was, I was saying in, in 2020, a Canadian public school board made uh, a rule um, for the first time in Canada that it's, um, it's Shia teachers, you know, regardless of their full time or part time, they can take off, uh, they can take time off during the year to perform ziyara. Um, and I believe that this is because you fought for this. Now, what happened? What, what, what caused you to do this? Why do we get two weeks off to celebrate Christmas, but I can't get two weeks off to do my ziyara? Where's the equity and inclusiveness in this? You talk about equity, you talk about inclusiveness, you talk about how everyone should be included, blah, 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 whatever have you. But why can't I get two weeks off ziyara for, for, for ziyara? Do you why take two weeks off for Christmas? For it? We get two weeks off here for yeah. the Christmas season. So this is what i mean that you talk about equity you talk about inclusiveness but if i want two weeks off for my ziara i have to fight for it why so my and question why is it that all yeah my question really here is do you personally take off the two weeks for christmas no i don't because we already because we are already given two weeks off it's called the winter break here yeah i know that and so i'm saying what I'm, I'm just posing the question here that if you if you take the two weeks off that is given to you for Christmas, do you also take two weeks off for Ziara as well? Mm, I'm not sure if I'm understanding your question, Ali. I'm, I'm sorry. The thing is that we are never given the opportunity to take two weeks off for Christmas because it's already given to us. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. You know? Yeah, yeah. But for Ziara, like, I just didn't want to see any sh Shia teacher or Shia student actually having to decide between their love for Abba Abdullah mm -hmm. salam, and their and their work, you know. And what was the and reaction? So it, what was the reaction of the of the teachers, the rest of the teachers, then when you advocated for this? I received some messages from. Sorry, I received uh, messages from some uh, teachers saying, "Thank you so much for doing this." Um, I commend you for doing this. We really needed this. We need more equity. We need more in 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 inclusiveness in our board. So, um, but unfortunately, um, some of the reaction that I got from some people in the Shia community was that uh, you're imposing your religion. And I'm like, what do you mean imposing my religion? All I'm doing is representing their argument to them that we talk about inclusiveness and whatever have you. So then why are things not inclusive when it comes to us? And in my case at that time, I had put in my request just like everyone else does, like months before. Mm. And I had even planned all my lessons. I had a teacher, a certified French teacher who, who could come and cover my lessons. So, but then Alhamdulillah, after months of um, fighting, if you will, <laughs> back and forth, yeah, lobbying, yes. After months of lobbying, um, Alhamdulillah, now that uh, then I received an email sometime in March 2020 saying that uh, thank you for educating us. From now on, no teacher identifying as Shia, regardless of their position, has to 
lose their position if they go for Ziara and they can take time off without any worries. So this time off, is it, um, is it part of your annual leave days? So it is, no, I wouldn't say a part of our annual leave days. I, to be honest with you, I don't really know the, the soup to nuts of it too much, but um, it is something that now we have the right to do. Right. And so what did you say to those who, 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 who you know, who opposed this? saying that you know you're you're imposing your personal beliefs because you know what happens down the line when someone who is of a different background a different faith says well i want to take two weeks off for my own personal religious holiday what happens then what did you say to those i think that everyone has the right to take uh, time time off and oh and this was my response too that everyone has the right to take uh, time time off for their um, for their uh, spiritual journey, right? You know, depending if it is done. How do I say this? Like, if if the right if the right procedures are undertaken yeah. to take the time off. You know, for instance, I can't just say, "Oh, um, by the way, I am leaving in two days. I'm going to yeah. Iraq for 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 two." So, I mean, yes, you. I mean, when you're living in a system, yes, you do have to go through certain procedures to make sure that uh, you make that necessary change and it's mm. done nice and legal so no one can come and say, look, she's taken advantage of the system. Mm. Okay, interesting stuff. I mean, it, just again, when it comes to other uh, religious festival holidays that you might, you might have, for example, Muharram, Ramadan, mm -hmm. is that the same for those kind of days? Or again, do you have to take your own personal annual leave for those particular it's days? It's something that you do on your own, your own personal journey. Why is Ziyara so important, uh, Maliha? Why did you advocate for Ziyara specifically? Because I think that Ziyara is a perfect reminder for us to reflect on why we do what we do, on what our identity is, on what our end goal is, on what mm. our finish line is. That is why. Okay. Okay. That is why. And me doing this, it's not only just for myself. Wallah Ali, I, I did not do this to receive messages of mashallah sister, mashallah sister, mashallah sister Malihe, mashallah sister Malihe. Don't come at mashallah sister me. You know, use your own platform to make the necessary changes at your workplace, just like how I did. Al Alhamdulillah. Mm, mm. No, I agree. Uh, okay, so we're going to park this particular discussion for now. I wanted to move into, I guess, a bit more of a controversial topic that, again, speaking to you behind, behind the scenes, you're quite passionate about. Um, you know, unfortunately, nowadays, we do understand that schools in the West are introducing concepts and lifestyles that go against Islamic values. And oftentimes, you know, parents are left in the dark. So tell us first and foremost, without, I guess, being very specific, what is the dynamics between the parents who, are, who fear for their children's safeguarding and the schools who want to impose certain lifestyles and concepts to the, the, the children. What is this, like, this argument, this fight that keeps happening? I think that it all comes down to um, who actually knows how to raise the child better. And something that I, that I tell all the parents regardless if they're Muslim or not, regardless if they're Shia or not, is to get involved in your child's school. You can always email the teachers, you can always email the vice principal, you can always email the principal. If you're concerned about something, express your concerns, but of course it needs to be done using the right language. Mm. You know, you can't just barge into a school and say, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't work that way. Right. You, you have to be tactical tactful in uh, approaching situations like this, you know. Uh, check your child's uh, Google Classroom or Brightspace, whatever platform they, they use for in their classroom, 
and always, 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 you know, just um, if you're concerned about certain subjects, you know, have a, have a have a chat with your child. What are you being taught? Oh, what are what are you what, what are you doing for this unit? What are you doing for this chapter, and whatever have you, and attend board meetings attend parent councils, be a part of the parent council. Because no change can be made unless the parents are involved, because parents are the main stake stakeholders when it comes to yeah. um, the education system. Absolutely. Um, so what do what do what do parents do then? Because it, it feels like the schools have um, absolute ability to do what they want, impose what they want, and it's just a matter of, you know, take it or leave it. Is, is that the situation or through lobbying, can we actually make a change? I believe that through lobbying, as you said, we can make a change. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. To me, it's, it's, it's just like any, anything else, you know, you have to fight for it and, and you have to make sure that you're loud and clear. Mm that the world listens to you. Otherwise, there won't be any, any, any changes made. No, I agree. I agree. So be okay, a Mal part of your child's school. Malia, what we're going to do is gonna, we're going to uh, continue this discussion after a very small break, because when we're back, we're going to carry on uh, spe spe specifically speaking about this topic, uh, lifestyles, and how we can actually tackle this particular subject so that we can safeguard our children for the, for, for the future. So. Don't go anywhere. Well, I don't think you're going to go anywhere, but uh, for the dear viewers at home, we're going to be back in a couple of minutes. Welcome back, dear viewers of Morning Barakah, exclusively on Imam Hussein TV 3. The time is approximately 10 to 11 now here in the UK. Approximately 10 to 11 here in the UK, um, and if you've just joined us, we are joined by author, teacher, translator, um, a magnificent woman in the sense that she is a lobbyist as well, uh, a teacher, all the way from Canada in Toronto, Maliha Elias, who advocates for Shia identity, but also advocates for our young children to have a chance when it comes to what they are taught in schools. And is that what it's all about, Millie, here? Is it about, is it about giving the children the option to say, well, you know what, I don't want to be taught this particular thing because it's probably not age appropriate? I think that it's about uh, giving our kids the right Islamic education so that if they ever see or come across any teaching that is un-Islamic, un that it doesn't shake their foundation. Because, I mean, let's face it, living in the West, there are certain things that you do need to be taught. You just need to know that this practice is not is not something that is uh, endorsed by my religion. So yes, I respect the right that it exists, but it doesn't mean that I have to accept it and embrace it. Yeah. So nowadays, then, uh, Malia, un-Islamic lifestyles are justified, mm -hmm. and this is very, very important, um, and it's a fantastic point that. Mm -hmm. Un-Islamic lifestyles are justified as Islamic because the people who practice such lifestyles show themselves to, to, be, to, be, to, to be Muslims. Um, and essentially our children hold on to it as well. So how do you think we can protect our children from being influenced by such people? I will repeat my previous answer that our children need to be taught the right Islamic education so that next time if they see, for example, one of our sisters wearing the hijab and uh, doing some que some questionable activities that they don't see it as oh see like fifteen but abs but but no like this is wrong and this is right you know they need to be taught the islam uh, the islamic values and taught right so that they can defend the faith and say listen just because a muslim is doing this or just because a muslim is seen this this particular Muslim man or woman is seen as um, a uh, representation of the faith. Mm. That doesn't make it the faith them. It, that that doesn't make it Islam itself. Yeah. If that makes sense, because yeah, yeah, yeah. if we're gonna be 
be honest, you know, I have seen certain um, social media personalities, you know, who claim to be Muslim, who wear the hijab, but then do things that are rather questionable and then they're proud about it. You know, young people with no proper Islamic education, they can see and, and, and think, oh, you know what? Oh, so it's fine then. You can still be Muslim and still do this certain activity. But no, yeah. that's not the case. Okay, okay. So then as a, as a Shia kind of Muslim and a Shia Muslim teacher, um, again, on a, on a Canadian public board, how, how do you think we can empower the Shia identity? So before, actually, before we go into the Shia, how, how do we give them that Muslim identity first? Or is that not, is it, what comes first for you? Is it kind of the Muslim identity or the Shia identity when it comes to um, schools and, and, and our, uh, especially the children? Um, from my experience here in Canada, the Muslim identity already exists. The Muslim identity already e exists, but the Shia identity is missing there. And I think that we can empower that by by us being proud and unapologetic Shias ourselves, hmm. you know, for example, so I'll tell you something that uh, happened um, with myself, you know, just recently. Um, one of my, when I started my current school and on the first day, you know, you, you talk about yourself, you, you give your kids the opportunity to get to know you before you get to know them, because that's how you build a, a connection. And I made a PowerPoint slide, you know, ab about myself all in French. And then on the last slide, I mentioned that I'm a Shia Muslim and I showed pictures of myself in, in uh, Karbala in Syria, in Iran. And some of my students who are, sh who, who are Shias, it's like they lit up like a Christmas tree going like, Madam, I am Shia too. Madam, I am sh I, I, I'm Shia too. I'm Shia too. And then one of them uh, said, uh, the first thing that I, that I told my parents about you is that I finally have a Shia teacher. Yeah. That my French, that my French teacher is a Shia teacher and it's the first time that I have seen a Shia teacher, mm. you know, and um, uh, at my current school, uh, just before the Christmas break, we had uh, a specific time slot for our students to do their afternoon prayers. Mashallah. And I reached out to some of my Shia students and I asked them, you know, do you have a uh, turba when you pray? Because I was, uh, because uh, I was uh, planning on bringing some uh, that's why I was asking them. And one of them said, uh, no, my mom says not to bring in, tur bring in the turba. And I said, why? And then she said, uh, because she's afraid that something will happen to me. Oh, wow. And I said, well, you tell your mom that there is an unapologetic and loud <laughs> uh, Shia teacher in our school. And as long as I'm here, nothing is going to be said or done to our Shia students. And it's about time that we have to stop being so quiet and i'm sorry i'm saying this very openly but i think that we've been quiet for way too long we've been quiet for way too long and let's not limit shiism to only our channels and only our sunday schools you know april we have we have uh genocide awareness month here in canada i don't know what, what it's like there in the uk but this is the perfect opportunity for us to talk about shia genocide and alhamdulillah this year at my school I'm going to, I have taken it upon myself to um, raise awareness on Shia genocide in my school, in a Canadian public school. Mm. And because, see Ali, the way, I, the way I see it and what I'm about to say may be very controversial, but I really don't care because this needs to be said that dare I say, if there's one group that has seen Holocaust for centuries, Holocaust after Holocaust after Holocaust after Holocaust for centuries, it's the Shias. And if we're not going to educate people ab ab about it, what are we even doing? And is that what so you plan to say? that's my take on it. Is that, is that what you plan to say in, in, in genocide month in April? 
what I'm planning on doing in April is making posters that uh, educate people about Shia genocide. And I don't know if I ha if I can make that many posters because unfortunately for us, there, there are certain genocides and holocausts that even I'm not aware of yet. Mm. But that's what our about, story, right? And what about the current genocide? Oh yeah, that, there is awareness on, on that already. There's definitely, oh, is there? there's awareness on that. All, all, I mean, in my school, there is, in my school that there is, and actually my, my uh, school board is offering uh, healing circles for our um, Muslim students and Palestinian students. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Healing circles? Healing circles for Muslim mm -hmm. students and for Palestinian students. And both what, are, what se both are uh, se separate. Yep. And what, what does that entail? It is when they bring in a social worker and the kids get to share how they're feeling about what is happening and how they can deal with the anger, how they can deal with the frustration, what support is, what emotional support is available to them. Mm. So that is something that I want to, that inshallah, bithnillah, I want to bring for our Shia students because but is I there want enough, there to be a Shia, Shia healing there, circle. Is there enough pain that children are experiencing by looking at social media that is happening to the Shias for them to even think about healing circles for Shias? For the Shia healing circle? No, I don't think that there's enough exposure yet, but this mm. is why you and I ex exist. Absolutely. As a last point, um, Naliha, I want to, mm -hmm. it is, it is very difficult. I mean, teachers, I speak to a lot of parents and they say, look, there's a, there's a dilemma, uh, when it comes mm -hmm. to what they're, what they're teaching our children in schools. And mm -hmm. often is the case that they're, they're faced with two options. Either they pack up and leave and go to another country, say a Middle Eastern country where none of this stuff mm -hmm. is being taught, or they just say look it is what it is and whatever the, they're being taught i will you know i will essentially untangle what they're taught in schools and tell them the right way and they feel like the schools are this untouchable fortress that no one can penetrate and no one can influence now you being from the inside what are the steps mm -hmm. that parents need to take in order to make a real change to policy and to what is being taught at schools. What can they and can't they do? I think that first of all, parents should stop thinking that the school is this untouchable entity that cannot be messed with. Because mm. there are ways that you can withdraw your child from, say, a certain subject or unit or whatever that you don't agree with. All you have to do is get in touch with your vice principal and principal and keep a written copy of your communication you know at my current school parents do have that option to opt their uh, to uh, opt their uh, children out of certain um, units or subjects or chapters or whatever you know mm. I have seen some handwritten notes m myself so there is a way around it it's it's not com completely like oh no oh my goodness no I can't or whatever and uh, it's just um, getting in the know i would say getting in the in in the know communicate with you with your child's t teacher like i mentioned attend the parent council meetings attend the board meetings be a, be a part of it and make your voice heard do you really think that people are that the police is going to come in silence no no have at you... least not in on at least not in ontario have you seen any instances where parents have taken that route and it's worked? I have seen parents uh, writing notes to the, vi to the vice principal yeah. to have their child taken out of certain classes and certain um, uh, chapters and certain units and, is, and, and it has worked. It has. It has, but in a sense that the child won't be there when that particular is being taught 
but it doesn't mean that uh, the child is going to be completely withdrawn and not even know what is happening. Mm. Okay. Okay. Well, look, this yeah. is a very, very deep and I guess long um, and there's a lot of details behind this discussion. Um, I wish we had more time, but unfortunately, that's, that's the interview come to a close. You can now be free to have your coffee, um, prepare for... What, what, what are you doing now? It's, it's like six o'clock in the morning. Are you going to head to, to work? Or are you going to relax a bit? Inshallah, let's see, because I, because I actually have a terrible headache right now. <laughs> Oh, my apologies. Is that my fault? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, if you pray you. Fajr, uh, yeah, if you pray Fajr, uh, maybe it uh, will get better, uh, insha inshallah. Allah. Inshallah. Okay. Um, author, teacher, uh, translator. There's a lot that you do. Malih Elias, all the way from Toronto. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. So. Oh, 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 oh.